Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. I hope that you had a great Christmas. I'm very much so looking forward to the new year. I'm already feeling it. I'm feeling like I want to get seeds going. I want to get fresh plants. I'm ready. So January should be a fun month. Uh, let's just jump right into the videos from this last week, starting with planting spruce and peppermint seeds and uh, lemon cypress and amaryllis repotting plus flower arrangement. Holy moly. We did a lot that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always set out thinking, well, they're just little projects. And really, when you think about it, they are. When you're filming them, it does take quite a bit longer than if you were just gonna, you know, get them done quick. Uh, but anyway, we did plant spruce and peppermint seeds that I got in little kits at the Joanne Fabrics like in their checkout stand, they had this little case of them. Um, I'm a total sucker for stuff like that. And I thought Benjamin would really enjoy uh, watching it grow. And I'm just checking now to see if we have any action yet. Nothing. I'm he was so excited though. I know. He, was, he was telling me and like, and it's gonna grow. I know, but the thing is with those kits, I never really like trust the seed. Yeah. Exactly. There was no germ rate on it or anything like when it was packed. And so I might pop some like other peppermint seeds in and see if we can get some action because the peppermint at least should be up by now. Elizabeth said the red ones are called kangaroos paws. They are native to Australia and will last quite a while in arrangements. They have a drier feel to them and can take drought and full sun. Uh, yeah, so I actually went to the grocery store and picked up a few bundles of flowers. I already had greens here, so incense cedar for pine and we just put together a couple of arrangements and we found the most gorgeous English looking roses. They're called Catalina and they were just full multi-petaled uh, soft yellow roses and they're actually still going for it in our great room right now. So I'm really enjoying that arrangement. Amber said, question about the amaryllis bulbs. Why are we so exact about not allowing water to get down inside? If someone plants them in their landscape, wouldn't the rainwater do that anyway? Probably. <laughs> I think the difference though is that if, I don't know, in nature, I think things just work out better. When plants are outside, they're also getting wind and a lot of air circulation inside. The conditions are just way different. Also, if somebody tends to be a little bit more heavy handed in watering, plants just inside don't thrive like they would in their natural environments outside. So I think we have to just be a little bit more diligent and careful when we're caring for plants inside. RV Badlands said, where did you purchase the spruce tree kit? Would love to try that. Joanne's Fabric and Craft Store. Jury's still out on whether or not the seeds are gonna <laughs> actually sprout. Lori H said, did you give all those plants away? You don't expect them back? Couldn't it get a little pricey? Uh, yeah, so all of the amaryllis and lemon cypress I potted, I'm not gonna give all of them away, uh, but a few. I'm looking over at the table now. I've given a couple of lemon cypress, amaryllis, couple cyclamen, um, and then I will have some left. I'm kind of like, like holding on to the cypress. I love those lemon cypress so much. Uh, but I found such a good price on the cypress and amaryllis. I think both of them I got for around $7. Was she asking about the pots? Oh, the pot, do you give all those pots away? or plants. It could be either one. The middle of the word is left out. Oh, either well, way, I don't expect either of them back, plants I or would, pots. I'm guessing she was asking about the pots because like it would seem weird that you'd ask for a plant back, but you, I but could see is, someone what, asking for a pot back. What would somebody expect would happen to the plant though, in the pot? Well, like plant it out, I guess. Terracotta like is you, pretty inexpensive. I mean, it's something you can find at the dollar store even. Yeah. But even then at my parents' garden center, just a few dollars for a pot. In the end, like one of those lemon cypress with the pot and saucer is less than a bottle of wine would cost. And that's oftentimes given as a hostess gift or a host gift. Uh, but I've had people bring ornaments and things like that, like smaller items, which is really sweet. It's just, a, it's a fun thing to do, a fun tradition. It's totally unnecessary. You don't have to do it, but it's a fun thing to do. See, Tony said, uh, does cypress or evergreens need a fertilizer? Yes. Uh, not a bad idea. Usually when plants are big and established outside, we don't fertilize like our great big evergreen trees. If we noticed a problem, we'd probably start treating it accordingly. For things that are just getting going, like our arborvita hedge, you do plant tone every year. Mm -hmm on those on our boxwoods plant tone. Uh, we typically do a spring feed, maybe a second feed if we get around to it, but an early spring feed on our evergreens with plant tone or, or uh, evergreen tone or holly tone any of the tones. You could use any of the tones. They're similar enough that if you have one of the tones on hand, you could use it. I think evergreen tone and holly tone are the same. I was looking at the bags and I noticed that the, the three numbers uh -huh. uh, were exactly the same. Hmm. So I don't know if there's any other differences, but I wonder if it's just like um, 
like to give people confidence that they're putting the right thing on the right plant. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you have evergreens, then you just get evergreen tone Uh because you're like, oh, well, this is the one. But the thing about the evergreen tone or holly tone is they don't recommend it for arborvitas or boxwood. Those are like the two evergreens that they recommend plant tone instead. Um, So that's something to keep in mind. We have a lot of both of those, so we have to keep it in mind. Ariane said, your arrangements are always so pretty. Thank you. I have a little question. How do you take care of your arrangements? Do you change the water often or just add water to it after a few days? I don't ever change the water. You're supposed to. You'll get the longest vase life if you change the water, but my arrangements are always so highly like arranged that I don't want to risk messing it up. You know, there's no frog in those vases, so if I tried to pour the water out, it would be like difficult to do that without shifting the whole arrangement around. So I just top it up with water. And if I get a good week out of an arrangement, I'm happy with that. Creative Gardening said, what's the suitcase kind of thing next to the table on which you kept the plants? I'm guessing that's the folding table. Kind of looks like a suitcase. It's just a little four foot table that folds in half and just slides up against a wall for easy storage. So we can pop that open. We had it out when we were making the gingerbread houses in here as an extra work surface. It's really handy to have those. They're lightweight and you can make them really tall, like this taller, maybe even a little taller than this. Um, So they're really good work height. Next video is planting 1400 bulbs in December. (laughs) I was so glad to get that project done. It was weighing on me because the cut flower shed still is, like at exactly the same stage as it was the last time I showed it. Uh, it, The thing is, is that we're doing wood siding and I wanna make sure that we can get the painting lined up like shortly after the siding is put on so that it's not exposed to a bunch of our winter moisture and all of that. Um, So it's gonna probably stay like that until we can get those things lined up, which might be late winter, early spring, which it's totally fine. We're not out there very much anyway at the moment. Anyway, I was waiting to plant those extra bulbs. I held them back from the first time I planted the rest of the orchard because I wanted to not upset the ground right around the shed. Uh, There were also piles of dirt that we needed to remove where they excavated to uh, put the concrete pad down. So we got the dirt removed and I just decided it's now or never. Like I have to get these bulbs in the ground now. We are, we have a projected low in the 10 day of five degrees, five and seven degrees. Uh, And so like we're getting all the heated pet beds (laughs) plugged in. We're getting every plant like brought together, huddled together uh, because up to this point, it's been really mild. Like what's our lowest temperature so far? Like high twenties? Yeah, probably. That's pretty mild. Uh, So five degrees is is pretty chilly. So anyway, the ground would be pretty hard out there at that point, but it was a beautiful day. Like I was warm while I was working. It was like 38 degrees or something. By, by the end, my face was kind of numb, but it was a pretty, it was a pretty lovely experience out there. Donna said, Russell loves, loves, loves his mom. That fur baby adores you, Laura. He wants to make sure he gets his rightful amount of attention from you. Love the bulb planting. Can't wait to see it in the spring. Well done. Yes, Russell is a special cat. <laughs> I don't know what kind of word I would use for Russell. He's all over the place all the time, up on the roof, up in the trees, running around. He jumps like he'll jump like five feet up in the air. Like yeah. he'll just get this weird like. He has a weird gait too he when does. he runs. Like he, a crab. Yeah, he like kind of like his back end. Like maybe one leg runs faster than the other, so like he kind of gets off kilter. <laughs> he does. It's funny, uh, but he also knows how to open doors that have like the latch type of doorknob. Um, yeah, and he likes his attention. That's for sure. Jordan said, "Are these bulbs on drip?" No, (laughs) I probably put the cart before the horse on this one, but uh, Benny, who does all of our sprinkler work, he is going to come. He was going to come this winter, but it'll be early spring, hopefully, and we're going to be putting in a sprinkler system in that area. So he told us, he came out, he like kind of surveyed the project, told us where he will be trenching. So I kind of avoided those areas with bulbs. Anything that comes up out of those trenches, though, I can just plant right back down uh, in the ground or not. I mean, I think I avoided them enough to where it won't upset very many bulbs. So at least I know where the trenches are gonna be. We'll have sprinklers in there. So by the time they actually need water, we should have water in place. NC Flower Girl said, do you leave the plexiglass on the coop all year? No, it's just for the winter months. We only do it like, I don't know how long it's been up now, two, three weeks or something like that, maybe. When it starts to get pretty chilly, We put it up, we're so windy here. That's my main reason I have the plexiglass on the walls um, because I wanted to avoid having big drafts. I think that's the biggest thing to keep out of the coop. And so having the walls all enclosed, it really cuts down on that. We do leave the roof on all year though because the roof help keeps things 
a little bit cleaner. Um, it keeps things tidy in there and not like muddy and a big old mess. Um, anyway, it works out really nice. So in the spring, once it starts to warm up a bit, we'll take the Plexi right down and yeah, it works well. Jill said, wait, did you forget about the biotone in the holes? Did that not make the cut? I did it. I did put biotone did in you? all the holes. I thought we showed it in some of it. Maybe, maybe it got cut out. It could have, that happens sometimes. Like I, I know a lot of the time when I'm doing container arrangements, uh, it's cut out when I put the soil around the root ball. Yeah. So everyone's like, did you just put the, like well, pop the root ball in and not put any soil around it? <laughs> sometimes you do things so quickly. Like I know from experience when you're editing that like, if you don't, if you have a really long clip and you're kind of like scrubbing through it, mm -hmm. it's like you get stuff done so fast that it's really easy to miss certain things that you've done. When he asked me when he's filming and he's like, hey, you need to do that, but do it really slow. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I can't, <laughs> I can't pour this really slow. It's painful. It's painful to me to watch people who are slow. Well, like uh, when you're pruning or you're showing like how to cut certain things or we're doing, trying to do one of those pretty videos where you're like out foraging or something. Right. I'm like, you gotta go slower because I can't, it's too fast. I can't follow your movements from like cutting to putting yeah. it in the bucket. I think I've gotten better at it just because like, I know I want the shot to be clear. I want it to be like for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing in some cases. So I think I've gotten a little bit better at slowing it down a little bit. Video Ability said, help, what do I do? I planted 300 alliums, all different sizes in November around Thanksgiving, and they're all coming up now. We've had such mild weather here that with very little freezing temps at all. I'm in zone seven in Southern New Jersey. Uh, you know, uh, I had that happen. Was that two years ago? Our tulips and stuff started to come up really early. Yeah. And it was a weird year. You can, if it hasn't, they haven't come up too much. You can mulch over them just in case it gets really cold because if it does get really cold, uh, all of a sudden it can kind of burn the tips. It shouldn't hurt the plant. Your bloom cycle might be a little bit weird. I know that a lot of my tulips were shorter. Um, they didn't perform as well as they had in past years because of the erratic weather. There's really not a lot that you can do. Um, I did the, ones I remember the most were the white cubed mix that I have underneath the Hebe statue with the weeping willow up above her. I mulched because I noticed that the little tips were coming through. So I put that fine layer of mulch down and they did pretty well. They reacted and responded really well to that. Charles Darwin said, how important is it to turn each bulb the right way up? Can't it grow facing down? Poorly, it'll grow poorly. A lot of people say that if you don't know what direction is up or down, plant them sideways. And then that way, the plant will figure it out. And I think sideways is better than upside down, but let me tell you, I had some help planting some tulip bulbs two years ago and a whole, whole mess of them got planted upside down. And um, so I had the person go back through and dig them all back up and try to write them all, but we had planted so many that a lot of them still were facing uh, upside down and they just performed badly. Uh, the rest of them. There's a huge difference between the ones huge. that you had planted versus Well, you could see ones. it. It was when we planted the Vidal mix in the wells underneath all the maple trees along the west side flower bed. Um, so I did three of the wells and they were all beautiful and like perfect stand of tulips. And then the last two were like meager. Half of them got turned right back up, you know, right side up. Half of them didn't. And it was just sad because that was, that would have been a glorious display of tulips. And it just, when it's not uniform, it just kind of throws it off a little bit. And it was a learning experience for both of us, I think, you know, um, and it's not, it's not a big deal. You just kind of like learn from it and move on. And you know, some of them will make their way back up, but if you dig up that bulb and look at the growth of that stem, it's just weak. They don't get as tall. Um, yeah, it's pretty, I, I would say if you're going to go to the effort, of digging holes to put bulbs in the ground, just like if you're not sure, do a Google search or contact the company that you bought them from just to double check because you want to have those perform well for you. Too much work to not have them perform well. Amanda said, do your bulbs ever pop out of the ground? At first I thought squirrels or rabbits were digging mine up, but no, the bulbs have stayed there out of the ground for a few days. If it's not pests pulling them up, I'm wondering what else it could be, any thoughts? That's kind of a weird thing. I would imagine that it would be like a freeze thaw cycle if like, your ground was frozen and it thawed enough to like, like We've the earth had that moved happen, enough. Like remember the pots that we had, the 14 pots? Those were squirrels. Something, yeah, squirrels <laughs> well, were. There was dig marks. Yeah. So hmm. it, was a, it was an animal for yeah. sure. Um, they didn't like them. Thankfully they were daffodils and not tulips. But 
yeah, so they'd leave them like on the ground or on top of the soil. So I'd just go every couple of days and replant them and they turned out fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would imagine if it was a ground issue and you, you, they were popping out of the ground and you don't have any pests, I would think, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a good answer for you. I maybe a freeze thaw thing and I just pops them right out of the ground. I've never heard of that happening though. Any thoughts, Aaron? Any lo you're good at the logical answers <laughs> on things. Well, there, there might be more information that we're missing. You know what I mean? It could be. Yeah. There could be a pest that maybe doesn't leave a trace. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of, sometimes, you know, there are problems where it's like, um, you know, there's, so there's cookies missing from the cookie jar, but it wasn't my kid. I know it wasn't my kid. And you're like, well, okay, but <laughs> so what it could have been your kid. Are you blaming Amanda for something <laughs> no, right now? <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I do. Sometimes the problems come with like, you know, seemingly impossible solutions when really it's like the solution was just right there in front of you. The, we would get that with plant guarantees. They'd bring this plant in with the yeah. soil so drawn away from the sides of the can because it hadn't received moisture. I watered it every day. Yeah. I want this plant, re you know, replaced. I'm like, you did not water it. I know plants. I know what they look like when they're not watered. That plant was not watered. I watered it twice a day. Yeah. We'd have some people say, I'm like, oh. That's maybe getting off a little bit, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> next video is creating an outdoor winter tabletop display. So I have that uh, rolling bar cart from Plow and Hearth. I've had it there by our back kitchen door for a while. It needed to be cleaned horribly bad because it still had all the mess from summer. We moved all the lemon cypress off. And so anyway, I just wanted to kind of cobble together something that looked put together and clean and uh, wintry. Not necessarily Christmas because I wanted it to last through the winter. Um, that's why I opted to take the big colorful lights off. I feel like white twinkle lights kind of are a little bit more winter, less, I mean, definitely still Christmas, but less Christmas than the big colorful bulb lights that I had out there. Anyway. Uh, blended with Madonna Devlin said, I moved out of my parents' house on my 21st birthday. I'm now 43. I remember when I first started to decorate for holidays and I felt so overwhelmed and broke. Thank you for being so real and honest. I think it's important for your younger viewers to hear. These days with social media, I feel too many younger people think they are supposed to have it all on day one, which is unrealistic. Yes, it is. Uh, it takes time and lots of work. 22 years later, six Christmas trees and 75 feet of decorated porch, I have gathered the items I've needed and wanted. Now the only time I feel the need to buy more is when you've inspired me to create a new vignette. I have a potter's bench by my back door that is going to get a similar winter scene as yours. Thanks again for your open, honest, and real content. Uh, you know, that was something, a point I wanted to make because I used largely things that I had on hand and I know that, you know, I got to thinking about it, like it's not something because like the hurricanes, those were something that I labored over purchasing those because we could not afford those. They were expensive. Um, I mean, it wasn't that we couldn't afford them, but we'd have to budget hard. You know, it wasn't for... like you put them on the credit card. No, no. And so like I waited a long time to order those and it was such a treat when I finally had them. And I just got to looking at everything I used there and I thought it's been like, I bought these one year, I bought this thing maybe the next year, I bought this thing a couple years later. And it's just, it's a matter of gathering things that you love and it doesn't happen on day one. It's been, we've been married for over 15 years now and we did a lot of or I did a lot of thrifting in the beginning thrift store shopping um, and redoing furniture a lot of spray paint a lot of hand-me-downs and I've replaced some of the things that I initially bought because it wasn't necessarily stuff I loved but it's stuff that worked at the time in fact we have it's the dumbest looking little thing but it's up in our bedroom still we have two chairs in one of the corner corners of our master bedroom and I have this um, like ottoman kind of it was a side table on wheels i bought it for three dollars i um tore it apart painted it cut the legs down and then i added a piece of foam and some plaid fabric and tufted the top to make it an ottoman we still have that yeah that three well it ended up being more than three dollars with the foam and stuff but i had the fabric and so i just did stuff like that and it's not because i necessarily loved loved it because i i love antiques and i love things like that that in those days we couldn't just go out and buy all the time Anyway, I don't know where I was going with that other than I just wanted to share that, yeah, especially with social media, which we didn't really do like 15 years ago. How long has Instagram and Pinterest been around? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like, I don't use Pinterest ever, but. Well, Facebook was first, then Instagram came along after, but. Um, but it wasn't know, when we were first married, right? Was it 2004 or five or something like that? When Instagram came around? No, Facebook. Oh, 
And Instagram was a couple of years after that, maybe? Yeah, so we had a lot less inundation of stuff and mm -hmm. uh, you know doing all the things. So I didn't really have that struggle in the beginning because I didn't have that constant. But I get it, you know, even now, with, even with all the projects we do, I see other people's projects too and think, oh, that is so beautiful and put together. I wish I could get all my, sp my spaces put together, but I don't have enough stuff yet. <laughs> um, so it might take another 15 years to have all of like the ability to decorate every single area. It just takes time. Uh, Julia said, have you ever tried growing your own moss as much as you use might be worth a try? I wish I could grow my own moss. I don't think I could ever grow moss here. Could you do it inside somehow? Like if you, let's say you had a, like a humidity controlled room. Well, probably. Could you? I mean, like you made a room for your root cellar. How like if you created something like that. This is my moss room. That would yeah, be extra. That would be <laughs> that super would extra. Be, that would be, that's intense. Um, that would be interesting though. Like how does one even start moss? Do you just get a piece of it? Does it, like, I don't even know how moss, like does it s spread quickly? I Do you know. need seeds? <laughs> I don't know. I've never looked into it. Carol said, always make your arrangements beautiful. Do you ever use big fake candles that flicker? You wouldn't need to burn your real candles, especially outside. You know, um, I have. I do have some pillars that flicker. I, that's just not the same. It's not the same as a real candle. And I know, I know that they're safer. And I know that they're like in the end, probably more cost effective because you're replacing batteries rather than big candles. But they just don't feel the same. It's like having a wood fire burning versus a gas fire. Mm -hmm. Like they both, like if you look at them out of the side of your eye, look the same, but they don't feel the same. They don't give you that same, the a same. A real wood fire is more mesmerizing when you're watching it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and it depends. If I'm doing an arrangement, um, like where it could be unsafe, maybe like if I'm using a bunch of dried elements and stuff, uh, I will probably consider that a little more, but outside this time of year, uh, well, I'm not, I wouldn't burn them like just on a regular nightly basis. It's mostly just burning them if you are having a gathering or um, you're wanting to spend some time out there, which is like not as much this time of year. Um, but if it's in a situation that like I was doing a mantle display and I wanted to use a bunch of dried elements, I'd probably consider doing that. Remember that one year I did, it was beautiful. It was a mantle display with a bunch of taper candles, flocked fake greens, a big white arrangements with like pheasant feathers. They were fake pheasant feathers. Oh yeah. Um, I used real tapers and everyone was like, ah, oh, I can't believe you would do that. Such a fire hazard. Our house is still sitting there. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, you don't want to like light them and then go to the store or anything. Megan said the Philadelphia Flower Show has just opened ticket, sale ticket sales. Will you be attending this year, 2022? Uh, no, we do not have plans on it. It's in June now, they right? They changed it. It's later in the year. It's it's like a harder time. <clears throat> yeah. You know, typically they make all those garden shows like really early. Yeah. January, February, March. Which is great for us. It's on our well, off season. That's what you have to do for gardeners because yeah. you're not going to get like landscapers to come in and do these cool displays during their busy season. Right. Yeah. Um, the only show that we are planning on attending this year, like solid plans for, is the Grand Garden Show on Mackinac Island in August. End of August. It usually like spans the weekend of end of August, beginning yeah. of September. I haven't looked at the dates yet. But anyway, I will not be speaking <laughs> at the event. Um, we're going to be there. And I just told them you can put me to work as long as I don't have to get up on a stage in front of however many hundreds of people. Um, so I'll be like touring people through gardens and hopefully just getting to meet people and that sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to that. It's been a while. It's been mm -hmm. a, a minute yeah. since we've been anywhere. Uh, Lindy said, will the orange slices last outside through the winter? Will critters be attracted to them? I don't think that they're attracted to the dried orange slices, but I think moisture gets to them more than anything, especially if they're exposed. Now we did have a blue spruce tree that I decorated with all of our natural things up on our front porch last year, but it's under cover so it doesn't get wet at any point and those oranges survived just fine and I'm still using them this year. Mark said, isn't Christmas about color and joy? Oh, well, I wasn't doing it for Christmas. I was doing it for winter. There's a difference there. <laughs> I don't know, people get joy and, yes, people get joy from different things. Mark. <laughs> I included that comment because there was like a part of me that sort of identified with it to like, <laughs> yeah, there should be more color. <laughs> but you've seen the rest of our outside lights, right? Yeah, that's true. There's plenty of joy to go around outside. Yeah. This is our like space of peace. Yeah. <laughs>
Linda said, love it. Did you put water in the bottom of the tree with lights? I didn't. Uh, when I'm keeping them outside, it's just really not as necessary because I don't need to get as long of a life out of them. Uh, you know, that one will be just fine through January. It'll be dry, it'll be ready to be done, uh, but it's far better than having to, you know, add a bunch, and the water would freeze. The tree wouldn't be able to take it up anyway. The ones that I used on our mantle, though, I definitely added water to the containers and watered those every day, um, and they stayed really nice. Joy said, your hair stays perfect and flawless throughout your projects. I keep needing to put up my hair. How do you do it? Love your videos and you've inspired me to start prepping some things for next year. I'm so used to having my hair down. It pretty much looks the same almost all the time, except for when it's really hot outside. This right here gets real sweaty and my hair is, has got quite a bit of curl in it. So it like starts to do this weird like swoopy thing. Um, and then if it's really wet, if it's really wet or humid outside, like you'll start to see this well, right now I have a lot of fuzz because, you know, I lost hair after having Samantha Grace. Uh, it happened with Benjamin too. Like I lost a bunch of hair right here. So I have like a bunch of baby hairs all over right here. So like really any given video, if you take a close look, it's like these <laughs> hairs just standing straight up. Uh, but I'm just used to having hair down. Now it's dry most of the year here. And that's probably why I'm able to keep it down because it, the humidity and stuff just doesn't affect because we don't have it. Empty Chair said, did you do the natural tree this year? Just saw the video of two years ago where Benjamin was eating the popcorn. That was the cutest thing. Remember when I caught Benjamin eating the popcorn garlands in the butler's pantry, Aaron? And it was like yes. stale popcorn. And he was like, mmm, this is so good. It's the cutest little clip. Benjamin, hey, I gotta put those on the tree today. We can't be eating on those. Not yet anyway. No. They're all stale too, yuck. <laughs> You know, I didn't do an actual natural tree this year, but I utilized a lot of the ingredients or a lot of the decor that I've been using on the natural trees throughout the years in our mantle display. So I used the gold leafed gourds. I used um, some of the ribbon that I used in past years, the dried oranges. Uh, yeah, so that's just kind of like my ode to the natural tree this year. Next video was 10 easiest annual flowers to start from seed. So it just is a fun thing to talk about this time of year. I've been going through my seeds. I have my inventory completely caught up at the moment. I still need to order a few things. I haven't ordered any dahlias for next year, which I don't need to, but I thought maybe I'll order like five new varieties. I don't sure. need to order a lot. Um, and then there's a couple of perennial flowers that I wanna try growing that I'm going to be ordering uh, anyway, so I just get excited about it and I just wanted to share a list of things, especially for people who are just starting out, who are beginners. I just wanted to share 10 really easy annuals to grow that you can just pop the seeds in the ground, don't have to have a grow light set up, none of that sort of thing. Um, and you can get wonderful production out of them. But I did also share some of my favorite varieties and a couple of the ones that I'm excited to try that are new to me. So for those of you who know, you know, you've grown these things before, it's still fun to learn about all the new varieties out there or what has worked for somebody else that maybe you haven't tried before. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that one. It's always fun to sit and talk plants. Jennifer said, so glad to have this list. I recently lost my husband. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Jennifer. Um, so now being a single mom, it makes it easy for me to not have to do a lot of fussing and still have a pretty garden. I'm glad, I'm glad that this type of video will help with something like that. Uh, the, the things that we talked about in the video are perfect for just kind of like putting out on the ground and not having to like manage a bunch of things. You know, when you start plants inside, I, I know a lot of people said, well, what about snapdragons? Why, didn't, why wasn't this in the list? Well, you have to start those under grow lights. And I really wanted this list to be pointed at, like you can plant these 10 things easily and just watch them grow basically with no extra fussing. So I'm glad that um, you're able to use some of that information, Jennifer. Rebecca said, what type of materials do you feel works best in staking up most of these varieties of flowers? And at what point do you place the staking? Is there a width placement you go by when planting several rows of each variety? Well, I'm gonna have to get back with you on that because I don't stake very much. We have one kind of staking system out there right now and we use it for amaranth, uh, sunflowers, corn, sweet peas and uh, dahlias, where we put a T-post, right? Is that what that's what they're called? Mm -hmm. We use a six foot T-post that's driven into the ground every eight feet. And then we were, for the dahlias, we run twine. So like a, a nylon rope is what mm -hmm. it is. Paul wants to use something different next year. He was bothered by the fact that the rope was white and it showed up so much. Oh. It's like next year I'm using black. <laughs> we're not using white because he wants it to disappear, which oh, isn't that awesome? 
it's awesome to have somebody helping out there that thinks about those things. So for those, we run a, a rope at two foot and three foot and lash dahlias to it as we need to. Um, also planting the dahlias on the west side of that staking system is perfect because the wind comes from that direction. So when it blows the dahlias, it blows them into the rope instead of like last year we planted them on the other side and the dahlias would just fall right over. There was nothing for them to like, nothing to buff it or is that the right word? The wind. Yeah, nothing sure. to hmm, whatever no. yeah. not hit them down to the ground yeah. <laughs> whatever um, and then we use ranch panels 16 foot ranch panels uh, that or hog panels i think is maybe what they're called they're, they're technically different based on the size at the bottom or something like that i like, can't remember what was it ranch panels that it yeah. was listed at it doesn't really matter it's just like a metal grid and since they're 16 feet long putting a t-post at either end and then one right in the center and using zip ties to zip it, zip tie it on a perfect way to lash plants up. I know there's a lot, it's a specific type of gridded, like kind of rope system. There's a specific thing that a lot of flower farmers use for staking up their plants. And it's, uh, you, you stake, put your stakes in the ground and then you run this uh, network of grid horizontally. Mm. So you might have like, I don't know, eight holes I don't know if that's how many, maybe there's only four holes. And then there's just like a big long row of it. And I've never used that before. What is it called? Hortonova is what it's called. Uh, and a lot of people swear by that. You can use it vertically or horizontally and attach it to your stakes. I've never tried it. I don't stake anything else up um, like zinnias, um, snapdragons. I don't stake stock. I don't stake nothing, no nothing else. But next year I need to work on staking my cosmos because I did notice some issues with that this past year. But other than that, I'm just adding staking systems as I find the need to do that. Angela said, me and my fiance are building our house this next year and having our wedding at our home. Does anyone have any tips for what I can plant to make our gardens look nice and not patchy? Any of the 10 I just talked about, if they are sunny areas, plant those. Just scatter seed in there and any patchy areas that you have, and it depends on when your wedding is, um, but they are great to come up really quickly and fill in. And even if you've got green, like green lush growth, um, if they're not all in flower yet, as opposed to patchiness, I mean, it's a really inexpensive way. A little bit of work on your part to get them up if you don't have an irrigation system, because you have to make sure to keep the ground moist until they germinate. And then, you know, pretty consistent water after that, depending on where you live. Again, if you get a lot of rain, it might be a little less work. Uh, but any of the ones I talked about would be great. And there's so many varieties that you can plant them according to your wedding colors too. Froggy said, Laura, can you help me with the problem that I have with chipmunks? I love to watch them, they make me smile, but when they destroy my sunflower seedlings to the point that I didn't even have one that made it this year, uh, it makes me mad. My husband is more than willing to take care of the problem, but I want to know if you have any ideas. I can only imagine how your husband wants to take care of the problem. Um, boy, I don't have that issue. I don't know like at what stage they'll start leaving the plants alone. You might have to like net them or I mean, provide some sort of a cage around them. Uh, there's like, uh, I've got a couple. They're like chicken wire cloches that you can put over seedlings. It might be a situation where you can get long ones, like really long, if you're doing rows, uh, but you might just need to net your stuff until it gets big enough that the chipmunks will leave them alone. Uh, Missouri artist said, can you share your calen calendula salve recipe, Laura? I love using natural remedies. Uh, you can find the, re the video if you go to YouTube and type in garden answer calendula salve. There is a video with the recipe. Specht Haven said, when you direct sow seeds, how long do you wait to fertilize? I would imagine you wouldn't want to fertilize too soon. I have actually never fertilized any of my cut flowers. They get uh, land and seed compost and biotone starter fertilizer worked into the soil before I direct seed. Then I put the seeds in the ground and that's it for the whole season. They seem to respond fairly well to that sort of treatment though. If they were perennial plants, they might start resenting the fact that they're not getting a lot of feed. And maybe I would get more production out of them if I did feed them, but boy, that space is productive. And I, I just love that they're so low maintenance that way. The next video is organizing the studio and plant tour, which we tackled the wall directly behind me in that video. So the, all the light systems, we have three right behind me. And then there's a table right to my right that was just full of junk. It had just become this piled up junky area. It was hard for me to walk back here because I had so much junk on the floor that you guys couldn't see. It just became a dumping ground and I really wanted to get some order to it. So we took after it started at this light system and moved our way down. Uh, just kind of spaced plants out, groomed them, looked for insects, disease, repotted some things, rerooted some things. And it is so 
pretty. It is so much better in here. I just want to spend time in here. I did, in the effort to clean this, create a big massive pile by our door. There were three piles. There was one for giveaway, one to go to the house, and one that needed to go into other parts of the barn, and they're all gone. We got them all cleaned up. All the other light systems, we have more light systems in here, are clean. There's like hardly anything on the shelves and we're ready to roll uh, in here. It's so nice to feel like we have space to move around. And the only thing that I haven't cleaned up in here is this, like all the drawers in this um, workbench. In fact, right before we started this video, I told Erin, I need to go through this and really organize and label the drawers because this one has a lot of really shallow drawers. And I've got all kinds of things in here. I was looking for my computer cord and I couldn't figure out which drawer I'd put it in. I had to open like four drawers to find it. So it'd be nice to go through this at some point and give it a once over, get things labeled, and then I can just work so much more efficiently. And if I need somebody to grab something for me, like if I'm working on something inside and Aaron's out here and if I ask him to bring in whatever, you know, hot glue gun or something, he'll be able to look at the labels and find it quickly and it'll be less frustrating for him too. Beth said, I just wanted to say that I'm so grateful to have found your channel. For about four years, I neglected my garden. It became such a mess till this summer, just uh, gone, I decided to clean it up. And now next year, I'm gonna plant flowers. That's exciting. I've had a lot of judgmental neighbors give me judgmental faces. Even now I'm doing the garden, but not one person wanted to come and educate me and help me out. What is wrong with your neighbors? <laughs> that is so, like as a neighbor, I would be excited to see that. Um, but your channel has made me feel like I'm accepted and it feels like you just wanna help people and educate people and I really appreciate that so much. Mm. Thank you for helping me learn about gardening. It's amazing. Beth, thank you for leaving that comment. That for me, that just fills me up so much um, because that is what it's about, like helping each other and educating each other and just like, let's all have successful gardens and enjoy our space outside. It's just such a joy-filled thing to do. Rochelle said, thank you for spurring me into action. My project is to set up a spreadsheet to organize and plan my seed starting. That's kind of fun thing to do. I can't help but notice you have pepper seeds started already. Is this for a summer harvest? Uh, so I did notice a few questions about that because I did start peppers, cucumbers, tomatoes, dill, and basil. I'm running an experiment. Um, so I've got them all growing right now in here. They're, I've got some tomatoes maybe three inches tall now, but we recently you know, converted our cold frame outside. It's a double walled when there's air blowing in between each one of the walls of plastic, which essentially makes that greenhouse like a bubble, like it's a like an igloo kind of effect. And then we have a heater running. Uh, we don't have, I think it's running right now because we just got it hooked up a couple of days ago. So we've been running it, even though there's really nothing going on in there just to see, like to adjust things. But I plan on keeping it quite a bit warmer out there. So I intend on potting these seedlings up and moving them out to the heated greenhouse where they're gonna get all the natural light. I might have to provide a little extra light because our days are so short, but I thought it'd be fun just to see if we could get early production. It's gonna be completely experimental. I would really love to learn how to utilize that space to like really, I don't know, just have as much produce coming out of there during the winter as possible. During the spring and summer months, we use it for annuals uh, and things that we have for projects. So all of that will have to be out of there by the time our annuals come, which is usually mid-April. But it, it sure is gonna be fun to see what we can get going in there. Uh, Jay Fleshman said, what is that beautiful wall color? So it's a, I actually went down into our basement and found the can this morning so I could tell you what the name is. It is a Sherwin-Williams paint called Web Gray and I got it in a satin finish and uh, I think I did, I need to do a second coat, you guys, because I think I did the whole uh, uh, north wall and the whole east wall with one gallon of paint. It's pretty, it's pretty thin in some spots. And on the card, it definitely looked more gray. Here, it looks kind of like a navy-ish blue. It's really a pretty color, I like it. I think it looks pretty with the green. Kathy said, Laura, do some of these plants go to your mom's garden center to be sold or are they all yours? I'm kind of new to the channel, so don't know. Uh, they don't go to the garden center. We don't sell anything that, that we do here at the house. They, a lot of them come from the garden center though and end up here. Carolyn said, have you done any succulent videos and how to propagate? If not, would you please consider making one? I don't know, but I think by the time this video goes up, you will have seen a brand new succulent video that we just did. I talked about propagation. We made an arrangement. It felt good to do that. It's been a minute since we've done some succulent stuff. Sheila said, as I sit here watching your video of beautiful plants with only four days till Christmas, do you have any Christmas cactus? I don't, you know, I don't really care for Christmas cactus all that much. Like don't, don't hate on me for that, but I don't know. I just haven't really preferred the look of that plant. So there you have it. <laughs> 
Michael said, forgive me, am I the only one who expects to see a seahorse or angelfish drift through the background when Laura is in the studio? Aaron, isn't that the truth? Like yeah, you, it kind of right. looks like aquarium because yeah. the wall color looks blue and then you've got all this green growth. It does look like I'm, I've got a solid aquarium wall behind me, which right. would be kind of neat. Joanna said, what kind of shoes do you have? They are, they're uh, new shoes that I recently picked up. Uh, we were uh, Christmas shopping, bought some stuff for myself while we were out Christmas shopping. Well, I don't go shopping very often for clothes and such. I mean, you've probably noticed that. Um, and so I've got to kind of utilize every opportunity that I'm out, but we were shopping at REI and they have Blundstone, Bl Blundstone, B-L-U-N-D, Stone mm -hmm. brand. I had never heard of it before, but I saw those shoes on the rack. I'm like, those look comfortable done <laughs> i picked them up they're just like calf height boots and they are comfortable i had to buy new socks i haven't bought socks for a long time because i just don't wear socks very often i always just have my vans on which i do have a new pair coming by the way it says they're delayed i'm like i have big holes in both my pairs of vans lots of airflow <laughs> Lori said, you didn't mention the beautiful painting you hung. Can you tell us about it, please? I don't know a whole lot about it. It does have a, a thing on the back that tells about it. I didn't read it, though. I thought it was pretty. I picked it up at an uh, antique store when my mom and I went. Years this ago. spring? Oh. <laughs> Not years ago. This spring, it's been sitting on the floor uh, because I was going to hang it in one of our really, like, pain-in-the-butt areas to hang a picture, like in a stairwell. So I just hadn't done it yet just like all my pictures in the house. I just sit around for a couple years before I get them hung. Um, so I thought, I've got something in the house. I think that it would look really pretty right here. And I, I do like it, it brings a little interest. And that's what I wanna do for the rest of the wall. I've got another frame sitting in front of me right now that I think will be, I'm gonna do something in that frame here pretty quick. And I think it'll be pretty on the, the uh, north wall there. Gardening Grandma said, hi Laura, could you clarify for your viewers if the YouTube posting with a link is really you? You were asking viewers to attach pictures. It sure doesn't sound like something you would do. I maybe missed that one in, that in one of your videos that you were going to do this. That is us. So on Facebook and YouTube community, right? Mm -hmm. We posted that we are going to put together a video just looking at some of your containers that you love. And so we put out a post explaining what we wanted to do. And we're going to try to do a whole bunch of these. We did it with the greenhouse, greenhouses last year. And I think we'll do a green house part two uh, because there were a lot of submissions that we mm -hmm. weren't able to get to that's the thing I think we've had like there's been like well over 400 submissions yeah. for containers so there's no way we can do 400 containers in one video so we're just gonna like pick some and put them in a video and we'll probably do maybe several parts I don't know uh, they're really fun videos to do this time of year when we're all planning we're all dreaming of what we want to do in our garden so it's just so fun to look at what other people have had success with success with combining especially in containers mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes that can be uh, a little overwhelming when you have a lot of choice and, and that sort of thing. You don't know how things grow together or if they are compatible. So anyway, we did ask. Um, the link takes you to a Google form where all we ask is for like uh, the state or I think like state growing zone and yeah. then stuff about your pot, the diameter of your pot, uh, how many plants you put in, what the plants are, what kind of conditions, if it's on drip system, like all the things. So we could know how you got your pots to look so great. So anyway, that is us. Melanie said, since your light systems are all full now, what happens to these plants when you need tons of light space in the coming months for seed starting? Uh, well, that's another reason why um, we wanted to heat the greenhouse because our seed starting has kind of grown a bit and I wanna try to do a lot of that out in the heated greenhouse. We do have more light systems. We have about two and a half worth of what you see back here of grow lights. They're all kind of a mishmash of style. Like I've got one of the bamboo LED grow light systems. It's bigger, two of them that are smaller, and then uh, two small and one large of the Oslo light systems. They're all from Gardener Supply. So we've got all of those sitting over there, which we can utilize. A lot of these things too, there's a lot of low light stuff in here uh, that I can move out and they can go into the house or it can be moved around in the studio. So we usually are able to kind of shift things around enough to get Do any of your fit. seeds have to have light? All of them. Well, I mean, like light, could they, could they all be grown in the greenhouse? I think most of them can be. It depends on how high we want to kick up the temperature. Yeah. So I think it'll depend on how January goes and what mm -hmm. the, you know, how hard it is to keep the temperature up. And, um, yeah, 
it is going to be a learning experience. Yeah. I might end up doing a lot of stuff from seed out there if it fails. And the last video from this week was peaceful cooking with ingredients from the garden. We made Cornish pasties and roasted root vegetables. And we took a little bit of a different approach with this video and it was really fun for me. Uh, we, I wanted it to feel a little bit more like a story. Like it, we were telling a story of what the project was of the day. I wanted it to have very pretty shots and have very peaceful movement, um, slower like nothing really sped up. And we do a lot of sped up, which I do appreciate when I watch a lot of people's videos where I'm trying to learn something especially, and I wanna to get to the information quickly, and I don't want to see the, like, the long drawn out process of the project. I just wanna see it come together you know, quick. So I think there's a place for everything, but I love to see things that just, like I can feel my blood pressure drop and it just makes me feel more, more peaceful and more like it, I don't know, it motivates me to go do something like that and I hope that I mean I from what I read in the comment section I feel like most of you guys really loved just the change of pace and I knew there would be a few people who were like ah wait this is this is different and I don't know if I like it um, we always expect a little bit of pushback there's like hardly any though which was amazing I was really happy that you guys um, liked it because I would like to do a little bit more not a lot but I like to throw one in every once in a while that just has a different feel because I feel like it stretches me creatively and I have to do stuff like that in order to feel like I'm really happy with what I'm putting out there and I, th I think that also going down to a five video a day schedule five video, not a day, five video a week posting schedule is going to allow for spending more time on projects. You know, if it takes a day to film it and then another half day or so to like tie up all the loose ends and get it done before we, we don't have time to do that. You have to like move to get projects completed. Um, and I feel like we're gonna have more time to dedicate to some of those projects just to do things a little bit differently. And I wanna keep it fresh too. I don't want us to get to a point where I feel like all of our videos are exactly the same. Kinda of wanna like put something unexpected in there every once in a while. I always enjoy that. Anyway, Storm Morning Mom said, what a lovely video. It was so relaxing to watch you share your dinner prep with us, including the harvesting and feeding the chickens, Benjamin helping you harvest, Samantha wanting to be in your arms as you were at the sink, the cutting of the veggies, thanks so much for including us. I felt the peace of your home as I watched and this almost felt like a gift. What a blessing to be able to watch this. I wish you and yours a blessed, peaceful, prosperous holiday season. Merry Christmas. It's a really sweet comment and honestly, when I was watching back the video, I watch all of our videos back at least one time before they go out. Uh, it's, so the whole project vision was, was mine. Like I had a vision for what I wanted to do with this project. And I have a hard time bringing people in sometimes. So like I have a hard time explaining what I'm after. Uh, but Ken, who edits our videos, nailed it. I was only halfway through the video and I texted him. I'm like, seriously, excellent job with this. You really captured what I was after. Like it just flowed, like it just worked out. Uh, so I was really happy with it because I felt like the fact that he I kind of got what I was after and it came together. I felt like it was a gift. I'm like, I'm gonna watch this back one day, like 10 years from now, when I'm missing having little kids in the house, I will watch this back and it'll give me all the feels and make me remember what it felt like and what our life was like at this point in time. And uh, anyway, EJ said, to extend your storage of your beautiful vegetables, have you considered a freeze dryer? Uh, by the way, this dinner looks amazing and wow to be able to use all your homegrown ingredients. Uh, you know, I did consider a freeze dryer for a very short amount of time. Uh, I ordered a bunch of freeze dried things just to try them out. I don't know. I don't know how to utilize freeze dried food properly, I guess, but it was not good. Remember? I don't. I don't think you tried any. Mm. Good on you because <laughs> I was like, oh, this is horrid. <laughs> I need to, I need to learn the ways. I know there's ways I don't know about. Sue Ayres said, when did you plant the beets? They were planted in July. Barbara said, Laura, your voiceover beats 98% of the HGTV hosts. How many times has the network approached you? You know, it's been a little while since they have because I don't think they're exactly or we're not exactly what they want at this point. Uh, but it's two or three times. Yeah, I think you're right that we're mm -hmm. not what they're really looking for uh, either because I think what they would want is they'd either go for someone like top tier, uh -huh. like they would go with like a Martha Stewart. Like a big who, name. You know, mm -hmm. is like well known. Everybody knows who she is. She is. Mm -hmm. um, or they would be looking for like uh, hungry talent, you know, mm -hmm. people who are just like rearing to go and, and they'll do anything. Which is the position we were probably in more closely yeah, a few to years a ago. few years ago. But like we've got a really good thing going now. I, I think that we're kind of in this like middle, you know, section where they don't really want us because it would cost too much 
you know, because we already have a thing going. Like mm -hmm. we have our own sponsors, um, we have our own employees, and and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. I don't think that's really what they're. Right. We have our own little business model going. And you know, I have the things that I want. The goal was to create something that you know work for ourselves that could keep us close to our kids, keep us home, and keep our kids at home. And that was the goal. And I mean, that's amazing. We're able to do fun projects here. And there's really, like, the other thing that I really want is control. Mm -hmm. I don't want a network telling me what to, what we're going to shoot, where we're going to be. I don't want to be off site. I'm a homebody. I don't love to travel, not for work anyway. Um, and I, because I don't like to fly. I like to travel. Like, I like to go see places, but I hate to fly. I'm terrified of flying. And so it has to be good. Like, yeah. <laughs> I gotta make sure it's good. And I don't wanna go all over the place. I want to be home. Um, I like spending time with our extended family. And I, yeah, I just, I like to be able to do, like, what we share here is what we want to share. What's actually going on in our garden. And that's why we've kind of gotten away a little bit over the past little, little bit of doing so many, like, little projects. Mm -hmm. Usually, like, you'll probably see more of them coming through because that's what we do in the wintertime. But during the growing season, we kind of stopped doing those sorts of things because it didn't really fit in naturally with what we're doing naturally outside. So right now we're able to just share what we want, mm -hmm. do it at the schedule that we want. I don't have a production crew around me. I would say, how often do you think, like percentage-wise, you're probably filming 25% and I'm filming myself 75% of the time. Like I'm by myself most of the time when we film yeah, or with you. It's gotten, it's gotten to that point. It mm -hmm. was probably the opposite. It was probably like early on. It yeah. was like, I was helping well, you film like 80 90 percent oh yeah well 100 percent for a long time i would never yeah. remember to vlog yeah. that was a big thing for once you started vlogging me. it kind of got to the point where i wasn't nearly as helpful to you as i once was like i was almost slowing it down slowing the process down because you can just roll i think i think the thing is that you have you don't it's not that you can't but you don't want to take the time to like express your vision to anyone mm -hmm. and so when you have a plan in your mind you can execute that by yourself faster than it would take to explain your project to someone else and that brings up another thing i'm not a team player right i'm just not i'm a solo worker and so i would not fit their mold yeah very well at all and that's okay with me <laughs> Michelle said, okay, I've been watching GA for years. How did I miss the steers cow at your parents' place? I think we should see this in a video. Um, they don't have like a cattle operation. Uh, they just raise a few cows every year. In fact, I posted a picture of my dad out. <laughs> my mom and I were doing something together and we, we pulled up in the driveway and my dad was sitting out in the middle of the pasture in a lawn chair with the cows just standing right around him. And we were like, what's going on? We later found out we couldn't see that he had a little basket of garlic sitting on the ground, like in the grass near him. And he went out into the pasture to clean it because he didn't want to make a big mess elsewhere. And the cows were really interested in what was going on. It was just the funniest scene. I posted a picture of it. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's where our beef comes from. And there's a difference. Yeah, there's a big huge time. difference. <laughs> yeah. See, Jara CZ2 said, do you remember where you got the coffee drip thingy? Love it. You know, we've had so many questions about that, not only on this video, but also I posted a story a few days back where uh, I was making a cup of pour over coffee and it was just so pretty. And there was beautiful Christmas music in the background, which by the way, we got a ton of questions about that too. It's Phil Wickham's new Christmas album. I don't know what it's called. New West. I think it's new. a year old. Oh, it is. Yeah. What's it called? Do you Acoustic know? Acoustic Sessions. Acoustic like Sessions, Phil Christmas Phil Acoustic Sessions, I think. It's an amazing album. The, my favorite song on it is This Year at Christmas, is the name of the song, I think. It's not a traditional song, but the words of it, it just like hits me in the feels so much. Anyway, that was going and the smell of the coffee, so I posted a story. Anyway, I uh, tried to look up the pour overs because I did buy those at World Market. It's been a long time ago. I think I bought six, I've got six or, I don't know, they are copper, copper pour overs. They fit on any size of mug. You have your own little filter to put in there. So you can make yourself a quick cup of coffee that tastes really, really good. I do have Keurig too, and I use that every single day because it's fast and convenient, but it does not, it does not even, uh, compare to a pour over. So anyway, that's where I got them. I don't know if you can get the same thing anywhere else. I didn't like poke around online, but there's a lot of different pour over uh, looking things that you can get, but I didn't find one that looked exactly like that. Colleen said, video was amazing as always. Can we just talk about how clean your fridge was? I had to rewind it three times when you put the dough in the fridge just to make sure my mind wasn't playing tricks on me. 
Uh, yeah, the only reason why it looks clean right now is because we recently bought a new fridge. <laughs> we needed to buy one. Ours was starting to leak. I don't know what was going on, but it would leak intermittently. Yeah. Only sometimes. And then the refrigerator, even if you had it set on the lowest setting, it was freezing everything. And it was just like kind of falling apart. Like there were some pieces that were taped on it. And well, we never even bought it. It was just, it, it came was with here. the house. Yeah. And it's worked great yeah. for the five years that we've been here, but we just decided it's time. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. <laughs> uh, it was funny because we went into the store where they had them all and we were like, okay, which ones aren't back ordered? Yeah, <laughs> show us the true. section that isn't back ordered. Yeah. And so they showed us the section that wasn't back ordered and ours has to be counter depth. So those are kind of limited too. It's a smaller refrigerator than normal. And right, it's called counter depth. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So he showed us, we're like counter depth in stock. And so we came down to two and we yeah. were like, that one. Yeah. <laughs> we basically just pointed and ordered. It took like six weeks to get here or something like that, but it's so nice. Um, it has like that middle drawer that we, I don't know if it's like supposed to be used for beverages, but we call it beverage drawer because that's what my parents do. And they've got everybody's like favorite beverage lined up in that drawer. And I know every time I open it up, there's going to be a cold Diet Pepsi in there for me and a yeah. cold Diet Mountain Dew for you. And then there's other things that everybody else likes in there. It's just like the, I just love it. And then it has the bottom freezer, which I didn't think I was going to like, but it's lovely. It actually creates the sphere ice cubes. I didn't know refrigerators did that. It's not even a top of the line one, but it creates those spheres down in the bottom freezer so you can use them for your cocktails and such. And then it has the regular ice maker. That's the other thing, our ice maker didn't work properly anymore. And we go through a lot of ice in our house and we still don't, don't have our opal working yet. So um, anyway, that's why it's clean because it is new. It won't be clean for long, trust me. <laughs> Cassandra said, love all of this. Now, where did you get that beautiful and cute match holder? I'm sure from an antique excursion. Thank you for this wonderful video and Merry Christmas. That match holder was actually given to me by uh, Ken and his wife. So Ken who edits our vi videos, Natalie, his wife, found that match cloach is what it's called. I think I saw somebody said you could find them on Amazon. Oh. I'm not sure. Uh, let me look really quick. But it, it was called a match cloach on the, the sticker that was on it. It is so cool. I actually texted Natalie this morning and I was like, thank you for making me look so cool. <laughs> Cause it's the coolest looking thing. Yeah. Scheme design glass helix match cloach. It is on Amazon and there's different styles of them. That is just the coolest thing. I had never seen anything like it. In fact, my mom came over a day or two after I got it. She was like, what is that? So I just show her and she's like, I need one of those. So hopefully by her birthday time, she hasn't bought one because that'll be in her birthday present. Anyway, that is it for today's video. We're all caught up, caught up on videos at this point. It took us a while after we skipped yeah. the one to kind of catch up. So now it feels like I don't have to like really dig into the back of my brain to figure out what was that video again. Right. When you get too far removed from it and you do a lot of projects, you can kind of start forgetting. I'm kind of that way anyway about things. Movies are like in <laughs> and out. Like. Recently, what did we just do? We watched through some Marvel movies because you wanted to see... Well, I wanted you to see uh, Infinity War and Endgame. And <laughs> yeah. we get... So we watch a bunch of Marvel... Did we talk about this last video? Or last recap? I don't think so. You... We probably told some other people. If we did, I apologize. But it was kind of a funny thing because we watched both Infinity War and Endgame. I'm like... I've seen this before. And he's are... like, you knew what happened at the end. Yeah. Because I was kind of... I mean, I guess I shouldn't say it in case anybody hasn't. It's been out long enough. I feel like yeah. you can talk about how Tony Stark, you know. But anyway, yeah. I wanted you to see how it ended because you were pretty invested. Like, you've watched pretty much all of them. Mm -hmm. But you had seen it I somehow had. and forgot. Yep. But, like, things, pieces were coming back into place. Like, <laughs> this is, but see, I can watch it and then I can relive it and enjoy it again. Yeah. So here, like, a couple of years, you'll be able to watch it for the first time again mm -hmm. later. Yep. It's perfect. Anyway, I hope you guys had a great Christmas and I hope you have a really great week leading up to the new year and we will see you in the next video. Bye.